Hi, Captain Mike uh, here with you again for a um, rather strange tutorial. Uh, I don't know if any of you all have been involved in uh, R&D, research and development, but it seems to, uh, come to uh, be part of my life. Everything I do is trying to reinvent the wheel or make something work with things that I have available to me in my ever-growing pile of junk. Uh, today, we are going to attempt to make a pillar candle, and we're gonna make the mold. Normally, you would use one of these. Okay, it's simple enough, cheap enough, I've got a bunch of them, but maybe you don't wanna spend whatever that costs these days. That was 25, 30 years old, I don't have a clue what they cost today. So we're gonna make us, hopefully, a pillar candle mold that is reusable. And uh, we are going to attempt to recycle this wonderful piece of pillar candle wax. So to get started, we're gonna need things that you find, most of the things you find around your house. You're gonna need a bowl. Melt your wax in. You're going to okay. need a piece of PVC pipe. This is single wall pipe. It's not going to hardly work if you uh, use the double wall at Schedule 40. This is just single wall pipe. Uh, you should be able to pick a piece of it up, buy you a foot. At the, they'll sell you a foot at the big box store, but whatever. Get, get you a little piece of this. This has some scrap laying around. And uh, you'll need a piece of plastic of some sort. This just happens to be quarter inch. Uh, Lexon or some just just it doesn't matter just a piece of plastic I could even use metal or another wooden material but I have plastic you'll need uh, some um, well to make the mold let's just uh, this is what you're going to need for the mold you'll need this for the mold this for the mold you'll need a razor saw or something similar to cut this wonderful little hole uh, gap right here because you want it to be as thin a kerf as you can. Now if you don't have a razor saw, my advice to you is the next time you're in Hobby Lobby or Michaels or someplace like that, buy you one. They come in two or three different sizes. They work great. They'll even cut soft metal. Uh, get you one of these. Other than that, you're going to have to figure out how to cut that right there. You can use a exacto knife, I don't know, hacksaw, whatever, but that thing cuts straight and cuts good. Uh, you'll need something to draw a straight line with. You'll need a Sharpie or a pencil. Compass wouldn't hurt. And what you do is, I cut this, I think, about six by six, okay? Then I just went and found the center. And from the center, you can take, you measure this, it's about three inches inside diameter on this right here. So just, you know, took, well, I actually laid this on this right here and just kind of guesstimated. But I would advise you to take, before you drill your hole, take your compass and stick it there, spin it around, and draw you a nice, neat little circle. And then you drill your hole here. And you want to drill it about an eighth of an inch, probably no bigger than that. You want just big enough to get this width through. Uh, so you'll, you'll do that. And uh, then on the bottom of this thing, I didn't even bother to take the plastic off. It's kind of stuck to it. I got these little felt self stick on footsies. This happened to be a couple of inch long piece and I cut it into four pieces and stuck it on there. You can buy them at a Dollar Tree sells these things now for a dollar pack. It's got all kinds of them in there and they're great for a lot of things. So you got your little feet on there. You got your hole drilled through. You got this thing right there to, to line your this up on. Okay, now what you're gonna do, you're gonna have to have some modeling clay. Just regular old modeling clay. I've used this a lot. It's uh, got all kinds of colors or whatever. It doesn't matter. But get you some modeling clay. All right. You've drilled your hole, or drilled your circle, drilled your hole. You've cut this little slat right here, which you're going to find out is probably going to be very useful in the future. And you're going to take your modeling clay, and you're going to start rolling it out into a little snake or worm or whatever you want to call it. Uh, you need to get the modeling clay up to, to good working temperature. Softer the better, okay? Softer the better. More better. 
All right, we'll pull this thing back over here, and here's what you're gonna do with this. You're gonna take it, ah, let's do something else first. Let's do something else first. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get us some tape, okay? Put us off a piece about the length of this thing right here, and we're gonna put it across the gap that we sawed. Now this particular scotch tape is not the greatest stuff in the world. It's some of that in, in, invisible stuff and it has been known to turn loose at high temperatures and first one thing and another. But I'm thinking it's gonna do the job. If you wanna use masking tape, if you wanna use uh, um, you know, 100 mile an hour tape, whatever, uh, it doesn't really matter. It's gonna, it's gonna work just fine. Take a little extra piece I put and just kinda reinforce the top, okay? Because you don't want it to split, to split open. And, and I imagine when it gets hot, it will open up if you don't have something to hold that crack. All right, back to square one. You take your modeling clay and you start to put it around this thing. Now, before you get too into this thing, <laughs> I'm going to say it again. This is R&D, folks. I've never done one of these. I'm just assuming that it's going to work. And we may end up with uh, a pound of wax flowing out amongst our feet, all over our table. Now I can make this work. This is just what I have on hand. I happen to have some, all these components readily available. You're gonna have to go around this two or three times. Get you another piece, I didn't quite have enough. Roll it out. This stuff has been known to turn loose and as you work around this thin piece of PVC it's going to flex on the back side so you want to kind of push it down towards the bottom here and get a good seal a good seal go around it go around it go around it push it down match it down Okay, and same up here on the top, just kind of go around it, pushing down on the top so it won't flex or move with you. Make sure you got a really good seal. It's not rocket science. I think we can do it. If the, if the, if the, the uh, modeling clay will hold, it's going to be wonderful. Okay, so all right, <laughs> we've got us a, a mold. And the, uh, the hole's pretty much in the middle. It's pretty darn close. Good enough, close enough for government working for a tutorial. You know, if you're uh, real anal about this kind of stuff, you can make sure, darn sure, that your hole is exactly where you want it. All right, now, this, this is the only wick I had available to me, and I think it's what I was using for uh, uh, container candles. It's number two wick. You buy, get a bunch of it. I got 20 yards. I think it come from Kentucky Candle. Uh, look online and see if they're still in business. I am. I hadn't bought any stuff from them in a long time, but I used to buy all my stuff from them. Uh, what you'll do is you're going to go in here and you're going to try to poke this thing through there. If it made your hole right, it'll go right on through. All right. Now, pull it up here. Now, we're going to do this two ways. We're going to make enough wick on the top, so this can be the top of your candle if you want it to. And we're gonna cut off enough so that this down here, and I'll tell you why, I'll, I'm kind of doing that in a minute. All right, so we got that part done. Now, what you gotta do here, let's get this, let's get this stuff going real good again, all right? Get a wall around your hands. I know you guys are playing with clay. Don't, don't tell me you hadn't. You know what to do with it. And then you'll take the clay, and you'll go all the way around this little gizmo here and you'll mash it down, mash it into the wick, get it good in the wick, and uh, you wanna get it on down pretty good, okay? Put a little bit on the wick, top of the wick if you want to, doesn't hurt a thing. You don't want that to come loose because it'll leak there too. Tell me how I, I mean, ask me how I know. All right, you got that done, you got this done. Mash it down a little bit on your table, so it'll be kind of flat right there with these. And you know, always going back and checking this, making sure it's done. Now, uh, what you want to do is get you a dowel or something and so that you can 
tie this thing up like this, okay? See how I'm doing it? You can go over it over, over and over a couple times, however you want to do it. Uh, but you want to hold it so you can get your wick uh, straight up. Okay, I'll, I'll come back. I, before I tie, uh, pour it, I'll get another little gizmo. I've got actually some metal thing that you can use to do this, but you know, you can use a, 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 a chopstick like I'm using, or you can use whatever. It just makes your wick straight, and then of course you want to eyeball it or measure it with a whatever you've got to make sure that that is straight. And pretty much, when you get to this point, you are ready to pour a pillar candle into this job right here. So we're going to put it up to the side. I'll come back and fix this in a minute. Well, I've had to be fixed when I come back. Don't need the modeling clay anymore. And uh, I will bring the wax out here. I'm going to break this up into pieces. It's going to take between 16 and 18 ounces to do this. Okay? So I'm going to do this. And we're going to we're going to put a little fragrance in this candle. Fortunately, we won't have to color it because it's already red. But I'll try to find a fragrance that matches it and... Uh, Add that to the uh, mix while we're doing it, just for grins and giggles. And but I'll break this up, get it ready to microwave, and I'll be back to you when we're ready to pour this candle. Okay. okay for all practical purposes, the wax is uh, melted, and I'm fixing to get it out of the microwave in a minute and get on with the mixing of fragrances and pouring. But before I do, I'm going to impart to you all some very valuable tips uh, that. Uh, you can use, they do not teach these tips at the Candle College. You gotta get them the uh, School of Hard Knocks. Uh, number one is, uh, as you'll see, I, as when I get the, uh, uh, the wax out, it's in a Pyrex dish now, or a, a big Pyrex pour thing, not in the plastic, because in the past, I have had trouble both with Pyrex and with plastic. If you use a microwave, sometimes that wax, especially pillar wax, gets so hot that it will melt the bottom of the bowl. You can't see it really good here, but this one started it. And I've had a little melting problem here with something. Uh, you have to watch it in a microwave closely. On the other hand, believe it or not, I have had a Pyrex dish explode in the microwave and scatter whatever the contents were all over the place, making a great big mess. So be careful when you're using the microwave. I do it because it's fast, and I just don't want to set up a double boiler. My suggestion is, when you're making candles, or anything else that requires heat, to go ahead and start a little earlier and get you a double boiler going to melt your wax, or to melt your oils for your soap, whatever you're going to do. Uh, if you don't know what a double boiler is, ask your mother. Uh, but that's the best way because not only does it nothing going to uh, bust and break in the double boiler, you can keep the contents of that at a constant temperature by adjusting the heat. All right, that's the first great big tip, probably the only safety tip you'll need. Now, we come back here to my little candle uh, here, and you see I made a little uh, metal thing. Isn't that cute? Okay, you can do that. You can also do what I told you. And you can use a bamboo skewer. I'll just go ahead and take this loose right quick because we're not going to use that knot anyway. Uh, you can use a bamboo skewer just like that. See? They tie it. Just tie it on there. Get it tight. Line it up. That'll work. However, this is a really good trick right here. They don't teach this at Candle College either. Uh, and I don't know if they teach it, period. I just kind of got to thinking one day, gee whiz, wouldn't this be a grand idea? Get you a popsicle stick, drill you a hole in it, about an eighth of an inch, take you a clothespin, boom. And you can move it around, and it's nice and tight and straight and steady way. Now, how about that? Does that work for you? So that's what we're going to do now. I'm going to get out the candle wax. I think it's pretty well melted. And try to get this uh, fragrance put in it. And get it all going before it starts to solidify on me. And I'll explain to you things that paraffin, not paraffin wax, well yeah paraffin wax, but things that 
pillar wax wants to do as we're going to use this tile here because this is very, very hot. I sit on a stainless steel table. We're liable to have a, an event. Uh, so anyway, um, now before I uh, get all this, well, first thing I'll do is I'll, I'll mix this stuff up. Let's don't get ahead of ourselves, Mike. Sometimes you do that. You just get so excited about something. And I'm excited about this because I don't know where it's going to go. Uh, as I told you, this is R&D with my new bowl here. So I took approximately an ounce of apple cinnamon, because I had a lot of it. And it'll go with the red, okay? That sh an ounce should be enough for, that's 20 ounces of wax in there. Uh, over a pound. And so I know that won't be too much fragrance. And if I have this candle... Uh, if I decide to use it for something else later on, I like that fragrance. Stir it up. Don't take a lot. This stuff mixes in really good. This this wax is hot, hot, hot. Okay. All right. We got it all mixed in here. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to pour this in this mold right here. And if it ha comes apart, <laughs> cover your ears. Because I am, when the grandkids are not around and something goes terribly wrong, I am prone to... Uh, foul language. You get my drift. Alright, we'll pour it in there. Oh Lord, please Lord, don't let this thing just start coming out the bottom before it gets too hot. I want this to be a good video. Alright, we're going to pour it up to about a, within a quarter to an eighth of an inch at the top. We're not going to touch it. I don't count on it coming out the bottom where the wick comes in. I just don't know how tough this is going to be. I'm not worried about where we put the wax, I mean the 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 scotch tape either because uh, it's pretty much held together there. If it leaks a little bit, you can scrape it off. Okay, we got this thing poured. Smells really great. Everything looks good. Now, we're going to have to let it sit for a while, and I'll come back to you, and I'll show you how you have to re-pour. On a pillar candle, you have to re-pour. It'll kind of funnel down just like that in the middle. Now this little billet, it's okay, because all I do is just, this is just extra wax. But on a candle, you don't want that. So it'll do this, and you'll come back, and you'll pour some. You may have to pour it two or three times, which means you've got to melt this stuff back two or three times. So let's let it sit. I'll be back to you. Hopefully it looks like it's doing good, and you haven't heard me use any of my colorful language. So let's just okay, see what we got. for the uh, second pour on this candle, and actually it's done quite well. Or the, where I worried about it leaking on the base, which would have been a catastrophic failure, it hasn't leaked. It did leak a little bit, uh, as you can see, right along the uh, tape line. And better tape would probably fix that. Now, you notice I'm wearing a glove, and I had one on earlier when I had this Pyrex container. Forgot to tell you that the plastic doesn't get hot, but the Pyrex does. So, you know, when you're handling it, uh, get a uh, wear glove. All right, now you can probably see in here how it's tunneled. Can you see that? All right, that's called tunneling, and that just means that we're gonna have to put a little bit more wax in here, probably a couple of times. So you heat your wax back up. Go ahead and pour it all the way back up to where you had it the first time. And, Rinse and repeat. Take your little clothespin, close it in there, kind of center it up, and you are good to go. Okay, um, here we are for the second pour on this candle. And uh, you can see, now it's been 24 hours or better in it, or not better, it's been 24 hours, and you can see how it's tunneled when completely cooled off. So we're going to fill that that bad void right there in, and uh, hopefully this will be the last time that we'll have to. So again, we'll just pour it up to the, to the top. And we will let it cool. Okay. This thing has cooled off. This is the moment of truth. Like I told you all earlier, uh, this is an experiment. 
so it may be a total failure when I try to take this thing apart. The idea is that this candle will come out of this piece of PVC and then it all can be reused again. And of course the, the uh, first thing we want to do is try to take the uh, um, clay off of this thing. And this clay has worked surprisingly well. There's absolutely no wax uh, that uh, seeped around the bottom. We did have that little bit seeping right there, but nothing around the bottom. No boom. As soon as I got that wax loose, look here. And I swear up and down that I did not do this earlier. I, we, we just did it. So kind of pull that like that, straighten it out, pull it right off. Okay, there's that. And there is the candle. Now, there's some differences in the pour right here, okay? It's because where I was filling up the, the bottom. So, you know, I would make that the bottom. I would go ahead and maybe trim that, or next time not quite pour it, because you can see where I over poured, you know, up above my original pour just a little. You can see that right there. Uh, I would maybe just fill in the tunnel part until the until the wax was level with the original pour, and you wouldn't have that little tiny white line, and it wouldn't be that way. Now just look at that top. That top is perfect, okay? So you have just a little bit of a line right here, and of course you can take something and, you know, get rid of that, and uh, take a, um, maybe even a heat gun if you wanted to, and go over this, and it will make that little line go away. But there you had it you have a melting pour candle. Trim this off. And I misspoke, it's not a melting pour candle. It is a uh, pillar candle. And there you uh, have it. It is quite successful. Now, what I'm going to do with this candle is in my next video, I'm going to take this very candle and I'm going to make a cake candle out of it. And by that I mean I'm going to whip up some wax and I'm going to decorate this just like a you would a cake. Uh, I'm going to put the icing on it. So there you have it. I uh, appreciate you guys watching it. You see how I built this thing? And if you wanted to do the same, it wouldn't be a problem whatsoever to make yourself a pillar candle mold and just make some of the prettiest pillar candles that uh, you could make. So thank you guys for watching.